Hello, this is our Thief Starter Guide for Baldur's Gate. Thieves are great team members to pick up, and they can be fantastic at soloing as long as you're a little bit careful. Thieves do a great job of scouting ahead and taking care of non-combat obstacles like finding traps, disarming them, and unlocking locked doors. Plus, thieves can set up their own traps, they can detect illusions, they can pickpocket, and they can backstab. All of that is a lot of fun. But with all that said, there are two big issues that thieves have. First is that there are a ton of thieves that players can pick up as companions, and many of them are just going to be better than us. Second, thieves are iffy in combat. Now, in ranged combat, they're okay because they can keep their distance, even though they're not going to do as much damage as a fighter. But in melee combat, they don't have a lot of armor or hit points to handle dangerous opponents, so they're going to be weaving in and out of combat. With all that said, thieves are a lot of fun to play. For alignment, we can choose any alignment except for lawful good. For abilities, we're going to prioritize dexterity, which really should be at 18, or as close to it as we can get with our character. And then I would put constitution uh, at either 16 or above, and then you can improve the other stats. I'd say that strength is important uh, to a point for damage and carrying capacity, and charisma is nice as well, because being a party's face is always a good idea. Intelligence and wisdom aren't crucial here unless you're looking to dual class later on. For skills, we're going to talk about the thieving skills. Thieves get 25 points to put into a variety of skills that no other class has access to. Now the kits under thieves will get fewer points but they get bonuses to specific skills, and that allows for them to focus on certain abilities based on their kit. For example, Shadow Dancers focus a lot on stealth, while Bounty Hunters focus a lot on laying down traps. A base thief can put their points into anything, but as a side note, I have a mod that increases these to increments of five. You can distribute these uh, one point at a time if you want to when you're playing the base game. Now I'm going to give a summary of each of the skills and where they can be useful. First, for pickpockets. Now I'm not going to lie, I usually don't use pickpockets very often, but I might decide to do so in the playthrough we're going to do. Pickpockets is literally stealing stuff from NPCs who aren't companions or aren't hostile. There's a whole chart of items and skill level per pickpocket. But thieves can grab items and then sell them to fences or use them directly. There are some great items that can be grabbed by thieves that can improve stats or help you out in combat. Usually I am slow to pick this one up, but we might use it in our current game that we're playing. Next is open locks. Open locks allows characters to open uh, to unlock and open doors or containers. Each lock has its own difficulty value, but no difficulty is higher than 99 in Baldur's Gate 2. So if you get your open locks value to above 90 or 95, then you should be able to open everything in, the, in both games. Honestly, this is a big reason for taking thieves. Now, you just keep in mind that even if you don't have a thief, you may be able to bash items open if your strength is high enough. The only issue is, is that bashing, only ba the highest value you can get for bashing is 80%, whereas a thief can go as high as they want to. So a thief is very, very useful. Not only that, but they also get experience points for it. Next, is find traps, which also lets us disarm traps. This is let this will let our thieves take traps out from the floors and from containers. Now, just like locks, thieves, I'm sorry, traps have a particular difficulty. 
So a thief is going to need to reach a certain score in order to have a chance of disarming, finding, and then disarming a trap. There's only a few traps in Baldur's Gate 1 and Baldur's Gate 2 that can be disarmed with a difficulty above 100. But there are a few traps in, the, in both games that cannot be disarmed no matter what your skill is. I usually put, put points into fine traps, but because uh, when you're soloing, it's not essential to put points into this right away. Definitely put points into later on or find another thief that you can have them put points into it. Next are Move Silently and Hide in Shadows, and both of these go into the Stealth value. Stealth is calculated by the average of these two scores. It also is tabulated with if you, are, if you have your character literally standing in shadows, or if it's nighttime. These things impact their chance of successfully hiding in shadows. It should go without saying that once a character is in shadows, they can't really be seen or noticed. And if they attack, they get a bonus to attack, and the thief, or most thieves, will get a backstab bonus. Next is Detect Illusions. Detect Illusions is very useful, uh, particularly for the later game, but it's difficult to put points into it right away. Now you can save time, uh, for wizards and clerics by putting points into Detect Illusions. But again, I wouldn't put points into it until, mm, I'd say, later on in the game when a lot of mages are using uh, high-end illusion spells. Finally, there's Set Traps. Now, I love setting traps. It makes up for the power spike from spellcasters casting sequencer spells, and it's a great way to cheese your opponents. Now, the bad news is, is that um, if you have any, any set trap skill under 100, then there's a chance that the thief will end up hurting themselves when, if the snare fails, which it can happen any time under 100. But once you have your thief reach 100, then they can set traps down with no problems. So when I play the game, my priorities, if I'm soloing, are going to open locks right away. That way I can use it, I can unlock uh, chests right away in candle key. Later on, I would put points into either find traps or pickpockets, or depending on how I'm feeling, whether I'm gonna be either stealthy or if I'm gonna be uh, kind of setting a ton of traps, I would put points into those respective skills. Later on, I would put points into detect illusion, but it's not quite essential early on in the game. For weapon proficiencies, thieves can use the following items. They can use long swords, they can use short swords, they can use katanas, they can use scimitars, they can use daggers, they can use clubs, they can use quarter staves, they can use light crossbows, they can use short bows, they can use darts, and they can use slings. Uh, with my kind of philosophy that a character should have, a good character should have a distance option and a melee option, uh, for the Melee option, you have quite a lot of options here. I think long swords technically gives you the uh, most damage, uh, the highest damage, but there are advantages, or sorry, katanas actually give you the highest damage, but there are advantages to going with like short swords or daggers or, uh, uh, you know, definitely long swords as well. I probably wouldn't do uh, clubs, although scimitars are not a bad option either. For ranged options, uh, the two best options are either going to be light crossbow or a, sh or a short bow. Um, uh, crossbows, they do a little more damage, but they only do one attack per round. Whereas a short bow will do two attacks per round, but do a little less damage. I think if you're going to be kiting, if you're going to be kind of keeping your distance, short bow is probably a better option because you then can just fire off, you know, more volleys, have more chances to hit and just do, you know, uh, regular damage versus fire one shot, run for 10 seconds, which feels like, doesn't sound like a long time, but it is a long time. Uh, and then fire another shot that might miss and then wait 10 seconds and then fire again. 
So it makes it, it makes kiting a little bit difficult. Whereas uh, firing short bows early on, it's going to be tough because you're missing a lot of shots, but you're you're going to be hitting a little more frequently than firing with crossbows. Then there's the appearance and our sounds. Now, if you're interested in seeing how a thief does, you can check out my gameplay uh, on the playthrough series for our thief. Otherwise, check out uh, the other starter guides on Baldur's Gate characters. In the meantime, feel free to comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Even if you tell all of your friends about how stupid I am with these run-throughs, I love being criticized, insulted, mocked, humiliated, and beat up for my lunch money. For now, take care and good luck. We're all counting on you.